I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Everybody knows that all directors are kind of crazy, but not every director is Martin Scorsese. You talking to me? Some people pronounce it Scorsese. His films are very violent, always messy. He was born in Queens and raised in Little Italy. He grew up around gang violence. Literally. He has large eyebrows and suffers from asthma. Martin Scorsese is what we like to call a cinema master. Before becoming a director, he studied our lord and savior, but got kicked out of seminary school because of bad behavior. His films make us wonder and put us in shock. He graduated from NYU and helped edit Woodstock. Martin Scorsese is the greatest and that's based on actual facts. He became friends with the movie brats. This included Lucas and De Palma with Spielberg and Coppola. He did a short film with a lot of blood called The Big Shave, and his feature film debut added nude scenes to be a part of the sexploitation new wave. Scorsese says he uses cinema like it's a weapon. Boxcar Bertha was shot in 24 days and Mean Streets was shot in 27. His next film was Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore. It won Best Actress. He kept the camera in constant motion to show the character's distress. In his next film, he had a cameo. He sat in the back seat. It was the film with the fake mohawk and the taxi. Taxi Driver might have inspired the son of Sam's plans, and it was booed at that film festival. Cans. It was inspired by the guy who shot George Wallace and inspired the shooting of Reagan, but I'm sure you knew all this. The would-be assassin did this to impress Jodie Foster. The shooting actually delayed the ceremony of the Raging Bull Oscar. Marty met with a young prostitute to research the character of Iris. Robert De Niro worked 15-hour days as a taxi driver. He even got a license. Taxi Driver was voted one of the 25 most dangerous films ever made. Martin Scorsese made The Last Waltz for free. He did not get paid. At NYU, he taught Spike Lee and Oliver Stone. That must have been a good lesson. Then he made a musical that flopped and caused him to go into a depression. Robert De Niro and Martin were both romantically involved with Liza Minnelli. Then they made Raging Bull and Robert got an Oscar and a belly. Yep, he gained 60 pounds for the role. Marty was doing a lot of coke and losing control. Chocolate was used for blood because the movie's in black and white, and Martin thought this would be his last film ever, so he wanted to do it right. Robert De Niro actually became a boxer and won most of his matches. Marty overdosed on cocaine. He was going through some rough patches. One time blood came out of his eyeballs after a bad batch of coke. He was very careless. And once he left the Cannes Film Festival to score more drugs in Paris. It was Robert De Niro that helped Marty overcome his drug addiction. Raging Bull is a true story. Total non-fiction. The frame rate of the fight scenes changed because the camera was overcranked. Number four on the AFI list is where this film is ranked. Raging Bull is full of improvisation. He does this a lot, you see. And he did it again in the film called The King of Comedy. This film is great, but it was another box office flop. Marty was hospitalized due to exhaustion and pneumonia, but he still didn't stop. He also directed the music video for that bad Michael Jackson song. And he directed After Hours, which features Cheech and Chong. He made his lead actor refrain from sex and sleep. This film is a parody of Hitchcock. That's kind of neat. He did a sequel to The Hustler called The Color of Money, and this is his only film to be shot under schedule and under budget. Ain't that funny? How the fuck am I funny? What the fuck is so funny about me? Tell me. Tell me what's funny. We need Martin Scorsese and he needs us, just like how he needed to make a controversial film about Jesus. God and Scorsese are two great creators. The Last Temptation of Christ was banned in many theaters. Controversy always comes when a film is about religious beliefs. Because of death threats, Martin had bodyguards at the film's release. Nominated for a Razzie, but it was a blast for me. Theaters were even burned down because of the film's blasphemy. Next, he did a film with Francis and Woody, and then he made a good film called Goodfellas. Oh goody. What's the point of making another gangster picture? Entertainment Weekly made a list of the greatest directors and put him at number four. This steady cam shot was done because they didn't have permission to film the front door. Some of the extras were actually real life mobsters. This film did not win Best Picture, it lost to Kevin Costner's. The real Henry Hill loved how the movie depicted his illegal crazy acts. Goodfellas was even parodied on the Animaniacs. That's it! This is one of the greatest gangster films ever made, probably. And this shot right here is an homage to the Great Train Robbery. Marty finds the number 11 frightening. He also has a major phobia of flying. Next, he remade Cape Fear and gave a cameo to Gregory Peck. Robert De Niro dropped down to only 3% body fat. Respect. <laughs> 
<laughs> then he made a personal project starring Daniel Day-Lewis. It's crazy to work with that guy, but you already knew this. Age of Innocence was yet another box office bomb. He loves to use Gimme Shelter, that Rolling Stones song. The booze, the coke, the bras. Martin Scorsese is crazy, and this we know. 25 characters die in the film Casino. The price for all the costumes was over a million. Next he made Cundin, starring non-professional actors, adults and children. Because of this film, Martin is banned from Tibet. Lots of international drama. The film starred actual relatives of the real-life Dalai Lama. For bringing out the dead, Marty and Cage rode around with paramedics in real life. Martin Scorsese has made five women his wife. Gangs of New York was originally going to star John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd. Most of the gangs in this film were real. Isn't that an interesting factoid? Thelma Scone Maker is his longtime trusted editor. And of course, Daniel Day-Lewis always stayed in character. Next, this obsessive Hollywood player made a film about an obsessive Hollywood player. It was the Howard Hughes biopic called The Aviator. Scorsese claims he used $500,000 of his own money when he went over budget. I'm sure he did. And he digitally recreated the film color to match the color films of each time period. Production was delayed when a wildfire burnt some sets to ashes. Kate Blanchett won an Oscar for playing someone who had won Best Actress. He made a documentary on one of our greatest wordsmiths, but he did not interview Bob Dylan because he was too nervous. Bob Dylan gave him access to unseen footage. He would not do that for most people. George Harrison's family did the same when he made a doc on the Beatle. He agreed to do The Departed before he knew it was a remake. And he even let Jack Nicholson do whatever he wanted for Pete's sake. Martin put an X over the characters who get killed. Spoiler alert, they pretty much all get shot. And Scorsese says this is his first film with an actual plot. Martin Scorsese is a legend, yes sir, and The Departed finally won him an Oscar for Best Director. Could you double check the envelope? Yes, he got to put a golden boy up on his shelf, and then he made an unfinished scene from Hitchcock himself. Even though the script had missing pages, he filmed it anyway. Just like Hitchcock would have, but in the modern day. He played himself in that Curb Your Enthusiasm show, and was in an Akira Kurosawa film where he played Van Gogh. For Shutter Island, he again teamed up with that DiCaprio dude. Val Newton's zombie movies were the inspiration for Shutter Island's mood. The Manson family threatened to kill him. This was cause for alarm. And to keep away demons, he wears a lucky charm. Then he took a break from all the blood and slaughter. He made the movie Hugo for his daughter. This is not exactly where we saw Martin's career going. A 3D kids movie starring Sasha Baron Cohen? The opening tracking shot took a thousand computers just to render. Marty spent the 70s on an alcohol, quaalude, and cocaine bender. That sounds like fun. But don't do it, kids. Don't do it, kids. <laughs> the Wolf of Wall Street says, fuck, 569 times. Some feel this film glorifies this guy's crimes. Worldwide, it grossed 392 million. That's a lot of monies. And was banned in five different countries. Martin Scorsese's filmography is cause for celebration, and he loves transcendental meditation. Scorsese is the king of beautiful violence. His next film took decades to make. It's called Silence. Adam Driver lost 50 pounds, Liam Neeson lost 20, and it premiered at the Vatican. Marty and the Pope got friendly. Silence was finished only days before its premiere. Scorsese read the novel many times to prepare. Martin Scorsese doesn't like new films, he says their images are meaningless. He's simply the best and we really mean this. So consider this video a course on the cinematically crazy, like the cinematic sorcerer named Martin Scorsese. Cut! Cut! Okay, good.